Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I guess I am live. We're going to do a very quick um, <laughs> little chat about full self-driving because as I can see here, if I got this right, oh my, that's the video details. That's actually not correct. <laughs> Let's go over here and do this one. There we go. Hit the right thing there. Full self-driving is now $99 a month from $199 a month. So that means it is half price. There have been rumors going around for the past couple of days that that was going to happen, but it appears that that actually has happened at this point. So we have a pretty pretty important breaking news here. So the first, you know, the first piece of this is that I gosh, it was around April 1st, but I think it was a couple of days before that. Tesla started to release uh, full self-driving beta, sorry, full self-driving supervised to the general public for, um, Oh, for you know, for a one month trial that was free. I still haven't gotten it, by the way. We have we have the one car that has had full self-driving since you know we purchased it several years ago and then transferred it to the new car. But our, our model three still is on 11.4. And I actually put in a service request this morning to Tesla. If anybody knows why, it says I'm on the, the current version of the software, but it's version 11 and it's not version 12. Don't know why I'm not getting the new version for that. But regardless of that, there was a one month period of time where the the, the the you know the trial which is still going on right now is available to everybody there was a huge uptick in the number of people who actually you know, started driving on full self-driving miles. As Tesla posted recently, there was a graph and it kind of was like this. And then there was an inflection point where more people were able to test. And then very, very recently in the last couple of weeks, it kind of went vertical and they hit over 1 billion miles of full self-driving, you know, data being collected, miles being driven. And there is a pretty significant theory that the biggest thing that Tesla wants right now is more miles driven on full self-driving beta. So this seems to you know, mesh pretty well with that theory, which is that once the trial was over, right? So you're going vertical and you're getting tons and tons of data. So you could be getting a hundred million miles a month, 300 million miles a month, 500 million miles a month. I don't know, driving in the United States and Canada, but that at that after that trial is over, all of a sudden it would flatline again. So if their real goal is to make sure that they continue to get huge amounts of data, then what they're going to want to do is make full self-driving beta fairly irresistible to the consumer. And by charging only $99 a month, you're looking at, you know, 1200 bucks a year, right? Or just a little bit less than that. But you're looking at that rather than $2,400 a year. That is a big deal. That means that a lot more people will choose, I would imagine, will choose to be able to afford full self-driving beta, or sorry, supervised, as opposed to previously. Uh, as many people point out, you know, if you look at if you look at the car market, Teslas are only accessing about 5% to 10% of the car market right now because of the price range that they live at. So if you drop the price of a vehicle by a linear amount by say $5,000 from $40,000 to $35,000, you don't get a kind of a linear amount of response in terms of the number of humans that will choose to purchase it because way more people live in the range of being able to afford a $35,000 car as opposed to a $40,000 car, drop it by another $5,000, you're looking at way more people live in that range. So, you know, you imagine the income graph of the entire, like, at least in the United States, right? We, we can talk about the whole world or whatever. But anyway, in all the car markets that Tesla serves, there is an income graph and it's a bell curve. And so most people live in the middle of that curve, they make a certain amount of money. And then on the high end, there's a, a, a long tail because some people make a ridiculous amount of money. And on the low end, there's, there's a tail because there's people who make very little money. So what you're doing is Tesla is moving across that, that window. And at a certain price point, they can only access a part of the graph that's pretty much in that tail range. <clears throat> But when you move that price graph down, right, when you move from 40,000 to 35, from 35 to 30, from 30 to 25, you're bumping that thing over until the wide part of the graph and you're able, you're, you're, you're getting a nonlinear response essentially. So you're, you're able to access many, many more people who will choose to purchase a vehicle if it's $5,000 cheaper, not just a little bit more people, right? You don't get 5% for $5,000. When you move it down from one price range to another, you might get a 25% boost in the uh, amount of uh, people that are able to afford that vehicle. Similarly, with something like full self-driving, which you would consider to be, let's call it a, um, 
it's not a necessity, right? So even though you purchase a car, it is very much a choice whether you want to get full self-driving with it or not. At least if you haven't driven it, for me, it would be very difficult to live without it, at least for long trips and everything, because it's become very much a part of like what I expect out of my vehicle. And it also means that I'm not going to purchase any other vehicle unless they have full self-driving to the quality level of Tesla. And I don't expect that's going to happen until Tesla licenses this to other people. So in other words, what we're looking at is a situation here <clears throat> where people, but you know, so not me, right? So the general public is going to be like, well, you know, I could get full self-driving beta or I could, you know, do other things. I could repaint my house. I could pay some bills. I could do some other stuff at 24, $2,500 a year, that's a significant chunk of money. And so you're going to have a lot of people who will be like, not a necessity, purchased a Tesla, good enough with the standard autopilot and everything. But when you suddenly have the price, you're getting, again, you know, that graph. <laughs> You've got a bell curve of what people are willing to afford. It's not what they really can afford. It's pretty much what they are willing to afford in that price range. But what the number of people who are willing to afford full self-driving is going to move towards the middle of that bell curve and you're going to get a huge uptake, at least I predict, a huge uptake in the number of people who will choose to go with full self-driving supervised at $99 rather than at the 200 or $199. So again, let's just round it and say $100 and $200. I know the classic marketing strategy of just saying that like, hey, it's this much money and we'll put a nine at the end of it and everyone will just imagine it's cheaper than it actually is. But anyway, it's $100 and $200. But but that you know, having the price is not going to double the number of people who are subscribing to full self-driving beta. If 4X, 10X, it's going to be a huge nonlinear response. And that's the really important part of this. Now, a lot of people are going to claim... Well, there's a couple of things. Number one, there's going to be people who are going to be pissed because they'll be like, wait, I've been paying $200 a month for full self-driving beta. Or wait, I paid $12,000 at point of sale to purchase full self-driving beta. I would hope that for those people in particular, like me, at least you would be able to transfer full self-driving beta once from one car to another if you've paid 12 grand for it because that's a lot of money. I was able to do that, so I'm fairly satisfied. I feel like that's okay. But you know, but there's there's going to be a class of people who will be kind of ticked off. I think people who subscribe for two hundred dollars a month are going to be like, well, you know, that's what I paid, and now it's cheaper, and that's great, so I can do it for less money than I did before. Probably not going to get a ton of complaints out of those people, but for people who purchased it at twelve grand or ten grand or whatever at point of sale, there's going to be some grumbling about that. <laughs> but but in the grand scheme of things, Tesla has very clearly been trying to move away from a purchasing model to a subscription model anyway, because that. That allows them a lot of flexibility. When I per when I purchased when I purchased full self driving with the car, the kind of feeling, even though Tesla was very explicit about it, was that's my software, right? I bought it, so it would be sort of like buying, you know, I don't know, Windows or Microsoft Office or something, right? You purchase Microsoft Office. There's an expectation that you will own this forever, or you purchase a DVD, right? Back in the old days, you bought a DVD of the Lord of the Rings, and you're like, this is mine. <laughs> you can't take it away from me. We are moving very rapidly in society in general, and Tesla is clearly flowing towards that as well, towards a subscription-based version of ownership. So you don't own a DVD of a movie or you don't own a CD of a record anymore. You, um, you have a subscription. And if you stop paying for that subscription, you lose access to it. So we've kind of all as a society come around to the fact that if we don't pay for our software, if we don't pay for our movie subscription, if we don't pay for our audio subscription every month, we lose access to that subscription and we no longer have it. So there's a, <clears throat> a sense in which you don't really feel like you have ownership anymore. And I think Tesla wants to move towards that. Also, it's less lumpy in terms of income, right? You don't you don't sell it and make a certain amount of money. Now they did actually, I know for tax reasons, they kind of declared it over time and amortized it and stuff. I don't, that's all very complicated. But but basically, you know, it's kind of lumpy. You get one big chunk of money and then you don't ever again if the person owns the car for five years. Whereas here, you have a pretty predictable you know, once a month they're paying 200 bucks and now it's $100, but still <clears throat> it's a predictable amount of money. And you're, you're moving people away from this idea of owning the software and moving them more towards the idea of subscribing to the software. There is still going to be a group of people who will out outright want to purchase the software for whatever reason, but that, that group is going to shrink a lot. I mean, when it, when it goes down to that, if you pay $10,000 at point of sale, 
<clears throat> and you're looking at 1200 bucks a year, that's what, like eight plus years you'd have to own the car before you would pay enough in subscriptions just to break even with that 10 grand. So you would be very unlikely to want to purchase it. You're much more likely to subscribe. And if you're more likely to subscribe, that means that you don't feel ownership anymore. And that means that Tesla at some point, if they want to turn on robo taxis and say, hey, you want to be able to drive without supervision, now we're going to charge $300 a month. They can do that without any, you know, without brooking any problems about that because it's a sub subscription. And what they could do is they, they could bifurcate that. They could say you could keep having it at 99 bucks a month and you get what you have right now, which is effectively level two, where you have to keep your eye on the road. You have to keep the steering wheel, all of that kind of stuff. But if you want to pay $300 a month, you can go to sleep and you can sit in the back seat and it will drive you anywhere. And if you want to pay $500 a month or split revenue with us or something like that, we'll add you to our robo taxi fleet. Now, this is obviously future stuff, right? This doesn't exist yet, but the, the subscription model gives them a huge amount of flexibility in the future future of charging a lot more money for things that people want. So I think that this, you know, strategically, this is a good idea on Tesla's part. This is something that probably they should have done a little while ago, but I think what they discovered when they got the free trial was like, wow, holy crap. You know, there was, I th James Dama has talked about this before. There's the take rate. So let's say that 10% of people, so if 100,000 people purchased a, a Tesla over some period of time, only 10,000 would actually purchase or subscribe to full self-driving. But even more importantly than the take rate was the utilization rate. So of those 10% that purchased full self-driving, so that, that 10,000 people, maybe only one or 2,000 people actually use the software a lot. And the other 80% <clears throat> uh, or 8,000 people or so just didn't use the software. And so they had it, they had subscribed to it, they purchased it, whatever. They just didn't use it that much. So I think what Tesla was experimenting with, with this trial, and especially by saying, hey, it's free and it's a very valuable thing, so try it out, is people are trying it out. And I would assume what they're seeing from that is that the, not the take rate, because of course the take rate is going to be very high when it's free, especially for a limited time, but the utilization rate is probably way up too. So rather than 10 to 20% of people utilizing full self-driving when they had it and they had purchased it, we're now seeing maybe 60, 70, 80% of people utilizing the full self-driving trial. And they may be like, okay, that's really beneficial to us because that number one means that that full self-driving 12 is very good because one of the reasons why people didn't use earlier versions is that they drove it and the, either they or their spouses said, uh, no, <laughs> you know, we're this, this is not acceptable. We can't have this happening. And we're we're not happy with that, um, with 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 the way that this feels, with the way that it drives and everything. With full self-driving 12, it's substantially better than it was before. It passes the spouse test. This is not just me, but many other people have said that it passes the spouse test. Or if you're the new nervous driver, then it may pass your test. <clears throat> so you're looking at a situation where a lot more people are actually utilizing the software and that is all to the good for Tesla if what they really, really care about in the end is data collection. Because what they want in order to get that march of nines, right? So let's say it's 99.9% good at this point. And it's only got 0.1% problem areas where it falls apart, doesn't work right, needs help, etc. 0.1% of billions of miles driven is still a lot of interventions every year. And the problem is without having a massive data collection wheel, where are they going to collect those bizarre edge cases? And so by, you know, 10xing or more the amount of data that they collect monthly, at this point, they can throw 99% of it away because all of it is just basic stuff that they don't care about. But they, if they, they have a good flywheel right now, they can identify the problems that they, they are having, the problem areas, the disengagements, uh, knowing that, I don't know, you know, some guy with a yellow jacket that's holding up a stop sign or something like that under a certain construction scenario, they can flag those kinds of things. And then they can suck that into the data engine. And you're not going to get a ton of that stuff. But with people driving it more and more people driving it, they're going to have access to more of that kind of data. So that is going to be a massive, massive benefit to Tesla. So yeah, they're, they're making money and this is high margin revenue. You know, they're going, they're having the amount of money they're making. So let's say there's a fixed cost of like $25 for whatever, administration fees and all sorts of other stuff, just logistical fees that go along. So they're they're more than losing half of that amount. So before they were making like $175 and I'm just 
pulling numbers out of my butt, right? I don't, I don't know exactly what the amount is, but there is some fixed amount of cost per license, you know, per, per car that has FSD. So let's say it's $25 just arbitrarily. They were making 175 a month with the $200 subscription. Now they're only making 75 a month. But on the other hand, if they 10 X the number of people who are utilizing it, that more than makes up for that difference in in cost uh, revenue that they're generating for that so that's going to be a huge benefit to them so anyway this is this is all to the good it's great for consumers uh, in the long run it could come back to bite us in the butt because of course we'll be subscribing and then Tesla will be like, hey, by the way, it's $300 if you want to go to sleep in the backseat. But they can do that, I think, because they can say, look, we're giving you something you didn't have before. So as long as they don't like raise this back up to 200 bucks a month, I think people will be okay. They'll be satisfied. They'll be like, oh, I want more features. Therefore, I will pay more money for that. That's okay. I just think that Tesla better watch out and not raise the price of this over time at least not without a lot of warning or maybe very small amounts like $10 a month, they could go up or something like that. So it's 109 a month, 119 a month, something like that. So anyway, yeah, this, this is all to the good. I'm going to have to go really soon because I'm going to a movie with my wife, but I do want to check a few comments here and just see, uh, <laughs> would like the trial in Australia, Craig. Yeah. Sorry about that. I know it's, it's very much, um, a problem getting it outside the US, but still, this is good. I think that full self-driving 12, the nature of the beast, the, the, the way that this thing is trained and the amount of data that Tesla has, I think means that they will be able to roll this out in other countries relatively quickly. Now, the problem is people driving on the left-hand side of the road as opposed to the right-hand side of the road, that may cause problems that, that could, you know, eventually be an issue, but hopefully that will come relatively quickly quickly now that things have gone. You do want to go see her, right? Okay, cool. I'll get off just a minute. I'm live streaming. <laughs> so do you want to come in and say hi? Want to come in? No, no, misinformation's here. So uh, so anyway, yeah, a lot of people, Nick is talking about, I wonder how many people are going to be pissed off like me that we got suckered into paying 12 grand. I paid 12 grand. Hey, see, she's, there she is. Uh, so we're going to see Kong. It's probably going to be terrible, but what do I care? So I, I think that that's, I think that that's true. But Nick, I believe that the way Tesla can make this right with people is to transfer the license. So at least one time you should be able to transfer to another vehicle. So if you bought your car a year ago or two years ago or whatever, and you get a new one in three years, they should be good about, they, you know, they've done this in the past. It's just been kind of hit or miss, but they should allow you to trade in the vehicle and get full self-driving transferred. I think I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying it seems only reasonable to me. Of course, I'm a consumer. I'm not the business, but we'll see what happens. But I think that they should do this. Uh, Kevin says, Kevin R says, congratulations, Tesla. This will maximize FSD adop adoption in line with Elon's vision. That is very, very true. Um, yep. So I think that's good. This is huge from Adrian. Hi from Denmark. Hey, Christian. That's awesome to see people from Denmark staying up late to, to be here. Um, full self-driving to Europe. Unfortunately, Europe's bureaucracy is in the way of, of full self-driving. Yes. But, uh, Neil the, and, and also Christian and other folks in Europe, it looks like January 1st of 2025 is going to be the date for you. And I know that still seems like a long ways away, but it's not that far away anymore. It's less than nine months away. And hopefully what can happen is Tesla can hit the ground running on January 1st, right? Because according to EU regulations, as far as I understand them, it's going to be a situation where, um, uh, you, you know, it will now be allowable to be able to have L2 plus type of full self-driving like autonomous driving like Tesla has. And hopefully Tesla will be able to train everything and have the whole system ready to be up and operational very, very rapidly after January 1st. So I know it's still a long ways away, but eight and a half months is, is, is better than no time at all. So hopefully that will work. Um, okay. So anyway, it's six o'clock. I've got to go see the movie. Definitely let me know in the comments what you think if you didn't get a chance to watch this live. And I'll probably do another video with some other people to get some other reactions. But I just wanted to do a quick breaking news thing. This is really huge news, folks. Uh, it's very, very positive on multiple reasons. Number one, it shows the amount of confidence Tesla has. I think the, the free month's trial showed how much confidence Tesla had. If they didn't have confidence in this software, they wouldn't have released it to so many people. Number two, it means that we as consumers are going to have 
have a, a benefit to it. And I know folks that have paid bigger subscriptions and especially people who paid a lot of money to purchase full self-driving are not going to be the happiest in the world. But just remember for the overall good, this is going to be a good thing. And hopefully Tesla will make it right with everybody over time. Uh, and number three, this is going to be absolutely fantastic for Tesla's data collection and their ability to improve the software very, very rapidly. It's it's not that they want to collect those billions of miles of data. It's what they want to do is find those bizarre edge cases and find lots of cases of those edge cases to be able to train. And they have a data flywheel that will make that work. So all of this stuff is to the good. I think it's just fantastic. Again, let me know what you think. Thank you all so much for tuning in with me or watching later. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. All right. <laughs> Guess we're not going to end the stream. There we go. Now we'll end it. Bye-bye.